Are you curious about how to unlock the secrets of the human mind? Have you ever wondered if it's possible to understand people on a deeper level like the legendary figure Buddha? Imagine being able to read someone's thoughts, feelings, and intentions with clarity and compassion. Picture yourself having the wisdom to navigate through life's complexities with ease. Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we explore the profound teachings of Buddhism to uncover 10 remarkable ways to read people's minds, just like Buddha did. But first, let's delve into a simple scenario. Imagine meeting someone new and with just a glance, you sense their joy or sorrow. How amazing would it be to understand others effortlessly without even saying a word? Join us on this enlightening journey as we unveil the timeless wisdom of Buddhism, guiding you towards a deeper understanding of human nature and the art of mind reading. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Wisdom Woven for more insightful content. Let's embark on this transformative adventure together. Lesson 1. Understanding the Basics of Mind Reading in Buddhism Buddhism teaches us that the mind is like a vast ocean with thoughts and emotions constantly rippling beneath the surface. To read someone's mind like Buddha, we start by understanding the fundamental principles of Buddhist psychology. Imagine the mind as a mirror reflecting the world around it. In Buddhism, this concept is known as mindfulness, the practice of being fully present and aware in each moment. By cultivating mindfulness, we can begin to observe the thoughts and emotions that arise within ourselves and others. One of the key teachings of Buddhism is the Four Noble Truths, which outline the nature of suffering and the path to liberation. To read someone's mind like Buddha, we must first understand their suffering. By listening with compassion and empathy, we can gain insight into their experiences and struggles. Central to Buddhist philosophy is the concept of impermanence, the understanding that all things are constantly changing. By recognizing the impermanent nature of our thoughts and emotions, we can develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. Buddhism also emphasizes the importance of compassion and loving-kindness towards all beings. By cultivating a heart of compassion, we can develop the ability to empathize with others and understand their thoughts and feelings. In Buddhism, the mind is seen as the source of all suffering and liberation. By cultivating wisdom and understanding, we can free ourselves from the limitations of the mind and experience true peace and happiness. To read someone's mind like Buddha, we must let go of our own biases and judgments. By approaching others with an open heart and mind, we can create a space of trust and understanding. Buddhism teaches us that the mind is interconnected with all beings and phenomena. By recognizing our interconnectedness, we can develop a deeper sense of empathy and compassion towards others. In Buddhism, the practice of meditation is central to developing mindfulness and insight. By quieting the mind and observing our thoughts and emotions, we can gain insight into the nature of the mind and develop the ability to read others. To read someone's mind like Buddha, we must cultivate a sense of equanimity, the ability to remain balanced and centered in the face of life's ups and downs. By developing equanimity, we can approach others with clarity and compassion. In Buddhism, the practice of mindfulness extends beyond meditation to every aspect of our daily lives. By bringing mindfulness to our interactions with others, we can develop the ability to read their thoughts and emotions with clarity and insight. To read someone's mind like Buddha, we must cultivate patience and understanding. By taking the time to listen deeply and empathize with others, we can gain insight into their inner world and develop a deeper connection. Lesson 2. Cultivating Empathy and Compassion Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, lies at the heart of reading minds like Buddha. It's about stepping into someone else's shoes, seeing the world through their eyes, and feeling what they feel. Imagine yourself as a mirror reflecting back the emotions and experiences of those around you. This deep level of understanding is not just about words, it's about tuning into subtle cues, gestures, and expressions. Compassion, on the other hand, goes beyond empathy. It's the desire to alleviate the suffering of others, to bring them comfort and relief. In Buddhism, compassion is seen as the key to unlocking the gates of wisdom and enlightenment. 
When we cultivate compassion, we open ourselves up to the interconnectedness of all beings, recognizing that their happiness and suffering are intimately linked to our own. To cultivate empathy and compassion, we must first start with ourselves. This means being kind and forgiving to ourselves, acknowledging our own pain and struggles without judgment. Only then can we truly extend that same kindness and understanding to others. One powerful practice for cultivating empathy is loving-kindness meditation. In this practice, we extend wishes of love, happiness, and peace to ourselves, our loved ones, acquaintances, and even to those who may have caused us harm. Through this practice, we gradually break down the barriers that separate us from others, realizing our shared humanity. Another way to enhance empathy is through active listening. When we listen with full attention and an open heart, we create a space for others to express themselves fully. This means putting aside our own judgments and agendas and truly hearing what the other person is saying. Compassion, too, can be cultivated through meditation and reflection. By contemplating the universal nature of suffering and the impermanence of all things, we develop a deeper sense of empathy towards others. We begin to see that everyone is struggling in their own way and that we have the power to alleviate that suffering even in small ways. Practicing gratitude is another powerful way to cultivate compassion. When we recognize the blessings in our own lives, we become more aware of the struggles of others. This awareness naturally leads to a desire to help to share our abundance with those in need. In our modern world, filled with distractions and busyness, it can be easy to overlook the suffering of others. But by slowing down, by taking the time to truly see and understand those around us, we can make a profound difference in their lives. Ultimately, cultivating empathy and compassion is not just about reading minds, it's about touching hearts. It's about recognizing the inherent worth and dignity of every being and treating them with the kindness and respect they deserve. As we embark on this journey of mind reading like Buddha, let us remember that true wisdom lies not just in understanding the thoughts of others, but in feeling their joys and sorrows as our own. In the words of the Buddha himself, with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings. Lesson 3. Practicing Mindfulness in Observation Have you ever noticed how the world seems to rush by, leaving us little time to truly observe? In the teachings of Buddhism, mindfulness in observation is a profound practice that allows us to read not just the words people speak, but the unspoken language of their thoughts and emotions. It begins with a simple act, paying attention. Imagine sitting by a serene lake, watching the gentle ripples on its surface. That's mindfulness, being fully present in the moment, observing without judgment or distraction. When we apply this to people, it's like peeling back the layers of a complex puzzle, revealing the inner workings of their minds. One of the fundamental aspects of mindfulness in observation is tuning into nonverbal cues. Words only convey part of the story, body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice often speak volumes. For example, crossed arms might signal defensiveness while a genuine smile radiates warmth and openness. But it's not just about what we see, it's about how we interpret it. Mindfulness teaches us to approach observation with curiosity and compassion, recognizing that everyone has their own story and struggles. By setting aside our preconceptions and biases, we can truly empathize with others and understand their perspectives. Practicing mindfulness in observation also involves honing our listening skills. It's not just about hearing words, it's about actively engaging with what someone is saying, tuning into their emotions and intentions. Sometimes, the most powerful insights come from the spaces between words where silence speaks volumes. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in our own thoughts and agendas, but mindfulness reminds us to slow down and truly see the world around us. When we observe with mindful awareness, we cultivate a deeper connection to ourselves and others, fostering empathy, understanding, and genuine human connection. So, how can we practice mindfulness in observation in our daily lives? It starts with setting aside dedicated time for reflection and observation. 
Whether it's through meditation, journaling, or simply taking a few moments to pause and breathe, carving out space for mindfulness allows us to sharpen our observation skills and deepen our understanding of the world around us. But mindfulness isn't just a solitary practice, it's something we can integrate into our interactions with others. Whether we're having a conversation with a friend, coworker, or stranger, approaching it with mindful observation opens the door to deeper connections and richer conversations. As we navigate the complexities of human interaction, mindfulness in observation serves as our compass, guiding us toward greater empathy, understanding, and wisdom. By cultivating this practice, we not only read people's minds but also touch their hearts, fostering a world of greater harmony and compassion. Lesson 4. Interpreting Body Language and Nonverbal Cues Have you ever felt like someone was speaking volumes without saying a word? That's the power of nonverbal communication and it's something we encounter every day. In Buddhism, understanding body language and nonverbal cues is akin to reading the unspoken language of the mind. Imagine this, you're talking to a friend and although they're smiling, their arms are crossed tightly across their chest. What might this suggest? In Buddhism, crossed arms could indicate defensiveness or discomfort despite the outward appearance of friendliness. This incongruence between verbal and nonverbal cues is where the art of mind reading begins. Now, let's take a deeper dive into some common nonverbal cues and what they might reveal about someone's state of mind. Eye contact, for instance, can speak volumes. In Buddhism, sustained eye contact signifies attentiveness and sincerity, while avoiding eye contact may indicate shyness or dishonesty. Gestures also play a significant role in nonverbal communication. A person's hand movements, posture, and facial expressions can offer valuable insights into their thoughts and emotions. For example, fidgeting or tapping fingers might betray nervousness or impatience while relaxed body language suggests ease and comfort. Furthermore, consider the tone of voice. In Buddhism, the way someone speaks, whether it's gentle and soothing or sharp and abrupt, can reflect their inner state. Paying attention to these subtle cues allows us to connect more deeply with others and understand them on a level beyond words. It's essential to remember that nonverbal cues vary across cultures and individuals, so it's crucial to approach interpretation with sensitivity and openness. In Buddhism, cultivating awareness of these nuances helps us navigate social interactions with compassion and understanding. In summary, interpreting body language and nonverbal cues is a fundamental aspect of reading people's minds like Buddha. By observing gestures, eye contact, tone of voice, and other nonverbal signals, we can gain valuable insights into the thoughts and feelings of others, fostering deeper connections and empathy in our interactions. Lesson 5. Developing Intuition and Insight Have you ever felt like you just knew something without any logical explanation? That's intuition, and it's a powerful tool in reading people's minds. In Buddhism, intuition is honed through meditation and mindfulness practices. When you quiet the noise of your mind, you become more attuned to subtle signals and energies around you. It's like tuning into a radio station. The clearer the signal, the better you can understand the message. Intuition isn't magic. It's a skill that can be cultivated. One way to develop it is by paying attention to your gut feelings. If something doesn't feel right, trust that instinct. Over time, you'll learn to differentiate between genuine intuition and fear-based reactions. Another aspect of intuition is insight, the ability to see beneath the surface and understand the deeper motivations and emotions of others. This comes from empathy and compassion, qualities emphasized in Buddhism. When you genuinely care about others, you naturally become more perceptive to their inner worlds. Imagine walking into a room and immediately sensing the tension between two people. That's insight at work. By observing body language, tone of voice, and subtle cues, you can decipher what's really going on beneath the surface. It's like solving a puzzle, each piece of information gives you a clearer picture. But developing intuition and insight isn't just about understanding others, it's also about understanding yourself. 
Through introspection and self-awareness practices, you can uncover your own biases, fears, and desires. This inner clarity not only enhances your ability to read others, but also leads to greater personal growth and fulfillment. Think of intuition as a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. In Buddhism, regular meditation and mindfulness exercises are like workouts for your intuition. They sharpen your focus, quiet your mind, and open you up to the wisdom of the present moment. One of the keys to developing intuition is trust, trust in yourself and trust in the universe. When you let go of doubt and fear, you create space for intuition to flow freely. It's like opening a door and allowing fresh air to enter. Suddenly, everything becomes clearer and more vibrant. Intuition is a natural gift that we all possess, but it's often drowned out by the noise of everyday life. By quieting your mind and listening to your inner voice, you can tap into this innate wisdom and unlock new levels of understanding and connection. Imagine having the ability to anticipate people's needs before they even express them or to sense when someone is hiding their true feelings. That's the power of intuition. It's like having a sixth sense that guides you through life's twists and turns. In Buddhism, intuition is seen as a doorway to enlightenment, a direct connection to the universal truths that lie beyond the surface of reality. By cultivating intuition, you can gain deeper insights into the nature of existence and your place in the world. But intuition isn't just about knowing, it's also about acting. When you trust your intuition, you make better decisions and navigate life with greater ease and grace. It's like having a compass that points you in the right direction even when the path ahead is uncertain. So how can you develop your intuition? Start by quieting your mind through meditation and mindfulness practices. Listen to your gut feelings and pay attention to subtle cues from the world around you. Trust yourself and trust the process. Intuition is a journey, not a destination. As you continue to cultivate intuition and insight, you'll find that reading people's minds becomes second nature. You'll see beyond the masks they wear and connect with the truth of who they are. And in doing so, you'll deepen your relationships, enhance your empathy, and bring more peace and harmony into your life. Lesson 6. Harnessing the Power of Active Listening Imagine a world where conversations aren't just exchanges of words but bridges to understanding. That's the magic of active listening, a skill that transcends mere hearing to truly connect with others. In Buddhism, this practice is revered for its ability to foster empathy and deepen relationships. Active listening begins with a simple act, giving someone your full attention. It means putting aside distractions, setting aside judgment, and truly being present in the moment. When you listen actively, you're not just waiting for your turn to speak, you're genuinely interested in what the other person has to say. To master active listening, start by practicing mindfulness. Tune into the speaker's words, tone, and body language. Pay attention not only to what is being said, but also to what isn't. Sometimes, silence speaks volumes. Empathy is the cornerstone of active listening. Put yourself in the speaker's shoes, try to understand their perspective, and acknowledge their feelings. Validate their emotions even if you don't necessarily agree with their point of view. Reflective listening is a powerful tool in the active listener's arsenal. Paraphrase what the speaker has said to ensure understanding. Reflect their feelings back to them to show that you've truly heard and empathized with their experience. Nonverbal cues are just as important as verbal ones. Pay attention to the speaker's body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. These subtle signals can reveal underlying emotions that words alone may not convey. Avoid interrupting or imposing your own agenda during conversations. Respect the speaker's autonomy and allow them the space to express themselves fully. Your role as an active listener is to facilitate their self-expression, not to steer the conversation in a particular direction. Practice patience and tolerance, especially when engaging in difficult conversations. Embrace silence as a tool for reflection and deeper understanding. Sometimes, the most profound insights come in moments of quiet contemplation. Remember that active listening isn't just about understanding others, it's also about understanding yourself. Pay attention to your own reactions and biases during conversations. 
Cultivate self-awareness to become a more effective communicator and empathetic listener. By harnessing the power of active listening, you can forge deeper connections with those around you. You'll build trust, strengthen relationships, and cultivate a greater sense of empathy and understanding in your interactions. So, next time you find yourself in conversation, remember to listen not just with your ears but with your heart. Lesson 7. Cultivating Presence and Awareness Have you ever been in a conversation where you're physically present but mentally elsewhere? It's a common experience. Our minds often wander, preoccupied with thoughts about the past or worries about the future. But what if I told you that true presence and awareness can unlock the secrets of understanding others' minds, just like Buddha did? To cultivate presence, start by anchoring yourself in the present moment. Take a deep breath and feel the sensation of air entering your lungs. Notice the sounds around you, the sights in your environment, and the sensations in your body. This simple act of mindfulness brings you into the here and now where true connection happens. With presence comes heightened awareness. When you're fully present, you become attuned to subtle cues in your surroundings and in the people you interact with. You notice the slight furrow of someone's brow, the hesitation in their voice, or the shift in their body language. These nuances speak volumes about what's going on beneath the surface. Practice active listening, not just with your ears but with your whole being. Listen not only to the words being spoken but also to the emotions behind them. Pay attention to tone of voice, facial expressions, and gestures. By truly listening, you show respect and empathy, fostering deeper connections with others. Presence and awareness go hand in hand with empathy. When you're fully present with someone, you can step into their shoes and see the world through their eyes. You understand their joys, fears, and struggles on a deeper level, forging bonds of understanding and compassion. In cultivating presence, silence becomes your ally. Embrace moments of quietude, allowing space for reflection and introspection. Silence isn't empty, it's pregnant with meaning. It creates a safe space for others to open up and share their thoughts and feelings without fear of judgment. With practice, presence becomes a way of life. You bring mindfulness into every interaction, every conversation, every moment. You're not just physically present, you're fully engaged, attuned to the rhythm of life unfolding around you. Presence and awareness are not just about understanding others, they're also about understanding yourself. Through self-reflection and introspection, you uncover your own biases, insecurities, and blind spots. By knowing yourself, you become better equipped to understand and empathize with others. Presence isn't about being perfect, it's about being authentic. Allow yourself to be vulnerable, to make mistakes, to learn and grow. True presence comes from a place of humility and openness where you acknowledge your limitations and embrace the journey of continuous self-improvement. In the busyness of modern life, it's easy to get caught up in distractions and lose touch with the present moment. But by cultivating presence and awareness, you reclaim your power to connect deeply with others and to live with intention and purpose. So take a moment right now to pause, breathe, and be fully present. The insights you gain may just transform how you relate to the world and the people around you. Lesson 8. Mastering the Art of Silence and Stillness In the hustle and bustle of modern life, the concept of silence and stillness might seem foreign or even uncomfortable to many. However, in the teachings of Buddhism, embracing silence and stillness is seen as a profound practice for understanding the nature of the mind and the world around us. Silence isn't merely the absence of noise, but rather a state of inner peace and tranquility. It allows us to quiet the constant chatter of our thoughts and emotions, creating space for clarity and insight to arise. Through silence, we can listen deeply to ourselves and to others, fostering a deeper connection with our own inner wisdom and the wisdom of the world. Stillness, on the other hand, is the art of being fully present in the moment without the need to react or engage in constant activity. It is about finding peace in the midst of chaos, anchoring ourselves in the present moment regardless of external circumstances. In stillness, we can observe the fluctuations of the mind without being swept away by them, cultivating a sense of equanimity and resilience. 
Practicing silence and stillness doesn't necessarily mean retreating to a monastery or sitting in meditation for hours on end. It can be integrated into our daily lives in simple yet powerful ways. We can start by carving out moments of quietude in our day, whether it's through a few minutes of mindfulness meditation, a leisurely walk in nature, or simply sitting in contemplation. By intentionally cultivating moments of silence and stillness, we give ourselves the opportunity to recharge and rejuvenate our minds, bodies, and spirits. We learn to appreciate the beauty of the present moment, free from the distractions and worries that often plague our minds. In the silence, we discover the richness of our inner landscape, uncovering insights and truths that are often obscured by the noise of everyday life. We come to understand that true wisdom arises not from external sources but from within, and that by quieting the mind, we can tap into this wellspring of wisdom that lies dormant within us. Stillness, too, offers its own gifts. In the midst of stillness, we find a refuge from the incessant demands of the external world, allowing us to replenish our energy and find peace amidst the chaos. It is in the stillness that we can fully appreciate the beauty of life, experiencing each moment with a sense of wonder and awe. As we deepen our practice of silence and stillness, we begin to recognize that these qualities are not only beneficial for our own well-being but also for the well-being of others. When we are able to cultivate inner peace and calm, we naturally radiate these qualities outward, becoming a source of inspiration and support for those around us. Silence and stillness are not passive states but rather active practices that require courage, discipline, and dedication. They invite us to confront the busyness and distractions of our minds, cultivating a sense of inner spaciousness and clarity that allows us to see the world with fresh eyes. In the silence and stillness, we come to realize that true happiness and fulfillment cannot be found in external possessions or achievements but in the depths of our own hearts. It is here, in the quietude of our being, that we discover our true essence and the interconnectedness of all things. So, as we journey on the path of self-discovery and awakening, let us embrace the practice of silence and stillness with open hearts and minds. Let us find refuge in the quiet spaces within ourselves, knowing that in the depths of silence we can touch the infinite expanse of our own innermost being. Lesson 9. Understanding the Interconnectedness of All Beings Have you ever felt a deep sense of connection with someone you barely knew? Maybe it was a stranger you met briefly, yet somehow you felt like you understood them on a profound level. This phenomenon isn't merely a coincidence, it's rooted in the fundamental teachings of Buddhism. In Buddhism, there's a profound understanding of interconnectedness, the idea that all beings are interconnected and interdependent. Imagine a vast web where every thread is linked to another, creating a tapestry of life. In this interconnected web, your actions, thoughts, and emotions have a ripple effect, touching the lives of others in ways you may never fully comprehend. Think about a simple act of kindness, holding the door open for someone, offering a smile to a passerby, or lending a listening ear to a friend in need. These seemingly small gestures have the power to create positive vibrations that resonate throughout the interconnected web of existence, bringing joy, comfort, and healing to others. Likewise, when you harbor negative thoughts or engage in harmful actions, you're not just affecting yourself but also sending out waves of suffering that can reverberate through the interconnected web, causing pain and discord. Understanding this interconnectedness is like realizing that you're a single drop in a vast ocean. You may seem small and insignificant on your own, but collectively you contribute to the ebb and flow of the entire ocean. Your presence matters and your actions carry weight in the grand scheme of things. This awareness cultivates a deep sense of responsibility and compassion towards all beings. When you recognize that every living being shares the same desires for happiness and freedom from suffering, it becomes natural to treat others with kindness, empathy, and respect. Moreover, this understanding transcends boundaries of species, race, religion, and nationality. Whether you're interacting with a human, an animal, or even the environment itself, recognizing the interconnectedness allows you to see past superficial differences and connect on a deeper level. 
Imagine a world where every individual embraced this understanding of interconnectedness, where compassion and empathy flowed freely, transcending barriers and uniting us in a shared sense of humanity. It's a world where conflicts dissolve and harmony prevails, a world that aligns with the core teachings of Buddhism. So, the next time you interact with another being, pause for a moment and reflect on the interconnectedness that binds you together. With this awareness, may you navigate the intricate web of life with kindness, compassion, and wisdom knowing that every thought and action has the power to shape the world around you. Lesson 10. Nurturing a Heart of Loving Kindness Loving kindness, or metta in Pali, is a fundamental teaching in Buddhism. It's about cultivating a genuine sense of goodwill and kindness towards oneself and others. Imagine a warm embrace that encompasses all beings, regardless of differences or faults. This practice starts with oneself. By extending kindness and compassion to ourselves, we create a foundation for spreading love outward. When we cultivate loving kindness, we begin by wishing ourselves well. It's like planting seeds of kindness in the garden of our hearts. We recognize our own humanity with all its imperfections and offer ourselves forgiveness and acceptance. This self-love isn't selfish, it's essential for our well-being and our ability to genuinely care for others. As we water the seeds of loving-kindness within ourselves, we naturally extend this kindness to others. We start with those closest to us, family, friends, loved ones, and gradually expand our circle to include strangers, acquaintances, and even those we may consider adversaries. This expansion of love breaks down barriers and fosters connection and understanding. Practicing loving-kindness doesn't mean we ignore or condone harmful actions. Instead, it means responding with compassion and understanding, recognizing that everyone is navigating their own challenges and suffering. Through loving-kindness, we cultivate empathy and become agents of healing in a world often filled with pain. The beauty of loving-kindness is its simplicity. It doesn't require grand gestures or elaborate rituals. It's about small acts of kindness, like offering a smile, lending a listening ear, or simply wishing someone well in our thoughts. These simple gestures ripple outwards, creating waves of positivity in the world. Loving-kindness also extends to the environment and all living beings. We recognize our interconnectedness with nature and strive to live in harmony with the world around us. This means treating the earth with care and respect, acknowledging that our actions have consequences that affect all beings. Through the practice of loving-kindness, we dissolve the barriers that separate us and embrace our shared humanity. We realize that at our core, we all seek happiness and freedom from suffering. By nurturing a heart of loving-kindness, we contribute to a more compassionate and empathetic world. In essence, loving-kindness is a transformative force that begins within and radiates outwards, touching the lives of all we encounter. It's a reminder that, despite our differences, we are all deserving of love and kindness. So, let's cultivate loving-kindness in our hearts and sow seeds of compassion wherever we go, embracing impermanence and letting go. In this final part, we'll explore a fundamental concept in Buddhism, impermanence. It's the idea that everything in our lives, including our thoughts, feelings, and experiences, is constantly changing. Just like how clouds drift across the sky and flowers bloom and wither, our lives are also in a state of flux. But instead of fearing change, Buddhists teach us to embrace it. By understanding that nothing lasts forever, we can learn to let go of attachments and expectations. This doesn't mean we shouldn't cherish the present moment or enjoy the good things in life. Rather, it encourages us to appreciate each moment fully, knowing that it's unique and fleeting. When we embrace impermanence, we free ourselves from unnecessary suffering. We learn to accept life's ups and downs with grace and resilience. So, let's take a deep breath, let go of our worries, and embrace the beauty of impermanence together.